the opinion sometimes that PowerPoint presentations make for powerless and pointless presentations. So, <laughs> um, so this is the thing. This is the thing. A lot. I've worked in academia for a number of years, and I am really, really surprised at the way in which many academics they have at very best rudimentary computer skills and they have they they hi welcome please have a seat in the front row i'm uh I've, we've done the smell test and i am safe today uh in the aircon and and uh it'd be nice if we could all you know sit closely so a lot of a lot of academics that i know i mean i know people that have lost like a decade of work because they've never backed up or that they when they if they use windows they haven't partitioned their hard drive and put the operating system in one partition and the data in the other partition. They don't back up their data drive. Um, many, many very, very established academics have not kept abreast of all of the technological um, uh, uh, up, um, advancements. And I think that um, this is a generalization or only in all generalizations are only generally true but a lot of people appear to uh, treat their computers as a toy rather than a tool but then we have the other situation where young people who are digital natives who have a familiarity and a kind of uh, a very tactile relationship with their technology uh, these young people are great at all the social media stuff, but they haven't kind of they don't put those natural abilities and those skills uh, to work in their academic work, and so they there's this bipolar deal going on where they are incredibly fluent when it comes to you know sharing likes and sharing YouTube things, but when you ask them to find literature, they have no idea how to use the database. So. Uh, it's all very intimidating because the technology is changing just so fast. And so one of the many caveats that I want to say today is, well, there's another of important caveats about what I present today. The first is that this is, I'm going to be introducing some of the ways that I go about, um, and I've used, uh, I like verbs, managing, manipulating, maximizing the electronic literature. Now, there are many, many different ways, and uh, the biggest, and some of the ways that I do things are related to my operating system. Now, I, there was a bit of discussion about the wording of this blurb because uh, we do work on different uh, operating systems, and every operating system has its advantages and disadvantages. And I will try and take the time to introduce what I'm aware of being Windows equivalents to things. So uh, I think um, I, I'm really just wanting to show some of the ways that I have now settled on uh, managing, manipulating and maximizing the electronic literature. But please hear that there are other ways of doing it. And I will try and remember to demonstrate or to mention alternative uh, techniques and the advantages and disadvantages of what I do. Okay, so um, I have, uh, I'm really pleased that Connie mentioned um, uh, this issue of access and I have, I did my PhD at the National University of Malaysia. I lived in South Thailand, I was living in South Thailand at the time and I um, went to Malaysia two or three times a year and um, you may as well know this about me that I really I have very few ethical problems with appropriating intellectual property um, for my own use I don't uh, sell it on I don't make money out of it um, and so uh, I've I've gone about collecting um, my stash of hard copy as well as uh, electronic versions of things in a way that is um, a bit agnostic about uh, copyright issues. Now, if I was at a good university that gave me access to all these things, 
and it could be a person with a endowments that were able to, you know, to pay for things, and maybe my attitude would be different. But um, you may not approve of my attitude, but that's my attitude. Um, many of us are involved in in the twilight zone between a profession and, and volunteerism. Um, that's not quite the right verb. But uh, if you do have problems with that, I apologise in advance. Okay, one of the one of the let's just kick off. Um, one of the things that I'd like to mention to you, there are a number of websites which I'm sure that you know um, that Brill and Oxford University Press and Columbia University Press and all the big uh, publishing companies are very not happy about. But this is a website where um, you are able to download uh, entire ebooks. Uh, and there are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of them. Uh, can you tell me uh, what is what someone's? Tell me an academic interest of yours. Give me a key word that I can put in here. Neuroscience. We've already established that it's very difficult to. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we've got. Um, let's let's that's real real big. So what I'm going to do is um, I let's just say neuroscience 2016. Okay. So um, yeah. So this is from Springer, Rutledge, you know, Academic Press. These are and you can download these. Let's do a small one. I go here here. And if we go download. And uh, these are these are PDFs. Um, boop. And there we go. Okay. Okay. So um, this is one of. The the main ways that I have negotiated, uh, there are lots of advantages of uh, as an anthropologist studying distinctively local aspect of Islam in South Thailand under Malay supervision in the Malaysian University. You have access to an enormous number of people who are critical insiders. So it's a great thing. But um, if I hadn't had access to this website or websites like it, it would have been very difficult for me to have done my job because these books are expensive. Um, so, uh, so we're going to we're starting here by talking about access. Okay, so this is uh, let's let's keep with this. Okay, so I'll be adding to this uh, website. I'll be adding to this mind map as we go along. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to put that in there. Okay, so. You need to know this. And you also need to talk about, let's just talk about Google Scholar. Now, how, what is the difference between Google and Google Scholar? How many of you use Google Scholar? Okay, so, okay, so what, what's the main difference between Google and Google Scholar? You get academic literature from Google Scholar. Sure. How many, so most of you actively use Google Scholar, is that right? Okay, good. Okay, now this is just, I'm making a note of things that we will be doing, uh, and I'm going to go here, and I'm going to go to academia.edu. Chris, is Library Genesis, is it, is it a subscription site? No. Is it open access? Open access. Okay, so you're basically going to be telling us about open access sites like that. I'm, I, am uh, I, yeah, I mean, put that on your browser and, and have a play with it. I mean, I wouldn't be putting this on the Institute's website. Okay, I'm not going to post this on a PR University's website, right. but I mean, um, and as I said, my my ethical my ethical position is that that um, uh, yeah, I'm not really interested. In, if I was at a resource resource rich, um, well endowed university, maybe my attitude towards appropriating literature in this way would not be the same. Okay, so let me talk about um, Google Scholar. And let me talk about academia.edu. Now, how many of you have heard about academia.edu? 
Okay, good. Okay, so you guys are all you guys are all rock stars. You're doing well. Okay, so um, to maximise, so let's go to academia.edu. Okay, in order for you to maximise academia.edu, what would you say some of the things that you need to do are? How do you maximise? So academia.edu is kind of like the academic equivalent to uh, Facebook. There are other there are other sites which, in my opinion, are not nearly as good. Uh, ResearchGate is one of them, but the number of... I mean, I, I personally, uh, you know, don't like it as much. But ha to get the most out of academia.edu, academia what do you have to do? Sign with your registering account. A again, please? You have to register an account. Oh, well, okay, you've got, to, you've got to sign up an account, that's fine, okay, good. But really, for you to get the most out of it, what do you have to do? You have to tag the topics that you're interested in. Right, you, what you have to do is you have to search for, let's, let's, um, let's do this, Pakistan. So, you need to, you need to, state your research and I'm not going to click the buttons because then I'll get lots of feet. <laughs> right. And I am interested in Baluchistan, you know, I am now. Um, but, um, um, but, but what you need to do is you need to go through and you need to stipulate your specific interests. Now, when you do that, what happens? And so people who are actively writing and publishing in the areas that you've stated you've got interest in will, you'll get updates. Now, what's another thing you have to do, which is similar to Facebook? And I don't use social media, I'm so sorry. But, so I hear that there's this thing called Facebook. You know, I hear it's really cool, but I spend so much time in front of a computer. You, f you can follow people. You follow people. Okay, so what happens when you follow people? Yeah, whatever they are. Or they have a new publication, you will get an update. Okay, now, uh, for those of you who have used academia.edu, what has been your experience about being able to download uh, articles? Have you had a lot of success? Yes. Yeah, so some will uh, not post a full text version. Some will post, some, some will post a proof uh, some might not post the final final version, um, but uh, mostly you will be able to download a full text. Uh, the, what I do now is that when I am reading something and I see a new name, um, what I do before I do anything is I look for them on academia.edu to see what I can access by them. And I, you know, it's, it's amazing about what you can get. Obviously, this is, I, I'm not going to be making big promises about how much time this is going to save you. And, uh, but I, I do think that um, in all of you, if you're wanting to uh, deal with this access problem, and it is a problem, let's just be honest about it, it is a problem that yeah, academia.edu is a really very, very powerful tool. So to summarise, you need to follow, follow the names, um, the people that you read and you enjoy reading, follow the names and then look at their stated interests and then consider tagging those interests. And then as you continue to read, there's an enormous, I mean, you know, we would like to think that academia is all science, but there's an enormous amount of serendipity involved in, in academia um, and, and as an anthropologist involved in, in field work. And so uh, this is one of the ways that it looks like. Yeah, okay. Comments and questions, does that make sense? Yeah. I have a question. If there is not a the author has not put their entire publication as accessible on academia.edu, is it possible, is there a way to contact them? Yeah, you can message them. Just say, hey, listen, my name is, I'm presently enrolled in a linguistics program, I've read your stuff and I've really, you know, I've got limited access to databases. Here's a list of some articles that um, I would be interested in reading. I know you're a busy person, would you mind uh, flipping them on? Now, I get those kind of requests all the time. 
And my, okay, so I'm, I'm not exactly, I'm not a kind of a, a prof, prof, professor emeritus with 15 PhD students and sitting on, you know, 10 academic committees. So I'm busy, but I'm not that busy. So if people don't reply, go for best case analysis. Uh, but I am all my, I'm, I'm always delighted. I'm actually surprised, but I'm delighted when someone's read my stuff and likes it. Whoa, I had no idea there was someone reading anything I wrote, you know? So I, I always reply to those kind of emails and say, hey, I mean, thanks very much. And thanks for the email, really delighted that this was helpful to you and I'm attached to um, the stuff here. Mm. Now, I, but people don't even need to do that to me because I put all my stuff up there. Mm. Yeah. But I mean, again, this is, this, is, uh, this is not really related to the topic today, but it does actually relate to a very, very important professional skill in, for academics, and, that, and this is particularly the case perhaps for people involved in the social sciences and anthropology and linguistics where you need to have a reasonably high degree of, of emotional intelligence and person, personal skills. And, and a very, very big part of academic life is networking and relationships. And it's not just uh, ideas and it's not just theory, but it's, it's professional, warm, uh, professional relationships. And that turns a career which sometimes can be very stressful and infuriating into a real joy. And so being, being willing to, or learning how to write emails uh, to your colleagues saying, you know, thanks for this, please could you consider taking the time to send this to me. Okay, other questions and comments before I kind of develop this theme of, uh, of access. Okay, so academy.edu is a very, very powerful thing. We've talked about this uh, uh, library uh, genesis. Uh, I'd like to just make a few comments about uh, Google Scholar. And because I'm going to mention Google Scholar, I'm just going to add something which I would argue is related. And that's going to be um, bibliographical 